Tonight, the Romanians and Bulgarians are coming in the new year. You've seen the headlines and heard the rhetoric. London is already experiencing a Romanian crime wave. I first reported from Romania 20 years ago, and I want to find the truth behind the headlines. Do you know anybody amongst your friends who'd want to move to the UK next year? No, I have no. Some British companies are keen to persuade more Romanians to come. The demand for them all over Europe is, is, is huge. But we also find a village emptied of loose skilled workers. So where have they gone? Very good in Krikot. We have exclusive access with British police on a mission from North London to Transylvania. Some people are, 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 have stigmatised various communities and said that they're coming to the UK bent on criminality. Back home, a British town which fears it faces more pressure on its schools and hospitals. Is it particularly <laughs> Romanians that worry? Honestly speaking, yes. And the government tells Panorama it's making landmark changes. We'll actually be able to stop them coming back if they're coming back here to carry on rough sleeping or begging. Images like these have angered the nation. But with just days to go until Romania and Bulgaria get full working rights in the UK, should we really be worried? Woods in North London. We're with the police looking for a camp of homeless Romanians. Officers from a special Romanian unit are also with us, working alongside the Met. Overnight, the weather's been bad, and the police think this camp has been abandoned. You can see they've really tried to make it home. They've got bags in here, hanging out. They've got mirrors, old mattresses, but really there's, a, there's an overwhelming smell of urine and feces. Right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for getting up at uh, four o'clock in the morning. Welcome Earlier, we'd had a briefing. The Romanian police arrived in the autumn as part of an intelligence sharing process with their British counterparts. Since 2012, we've had large groups of Romanians who have been sleeping rough, engaging in work on the black market and some anti-social behaviour. The camp's quiet. But then, we find two Romanians, a young couple, in a freezing tent. Can I just ask you, how long have we been here? Both of Just two weeks. Two weeks. The camp's been reported to the police by the landowner. If they don't raid it, they think it'll fill up again, fast. More rough sleepers, more antisocial behaviour. It's not really fair on the Romanians to be living like this, so we're going to take them to uh, Ashford Place, which is a homeless organisation, to see if they can get cleaned up, a bit of food, and uh, see if we can offer them some help. These two already have the right to be in the UK. Romania and Bulgaria joined Europe seven years ago. But until now, to work here, you needed to have specialist skills, like doctors and nurses, or be self-employed or be a seasonal agricultural worker. But from January the 1st, everyone will be allowed to join the jobs market. Do you really think that living in these conditions that you're in at the moment, that's preferable to being in Romania? But average salaries in Romania are about three times lower than in the UK, and in Bulgaria, around four times lower. <laughs> what kind of work did you think you, you might find? Construction. Do you have friends who've come here and got work? No. The police won't take it any further. They tell the couple how to get into the system legally next year and give them a deadline to leave the woods. <laughs> But there's another side to Romanians here in the UK. This is a reception at the embassy in London. It's full of lawyers, architects and students. 
of us are here to work, to find real jobs. Those who do work, they pay taxes to this government, just as any other, you know, English workers. The number of Romanian students at UK universities has increased by nearly 30% since 2010. But many of them sense they're treated with suspicion. What do you think is the perception of Romanians in the UK? Um, it's not a great one, to be honest. Um, but through our individuality and our views, we could tell them and show them the greatness of our country. The first thing I say when I, I, I meet a new person, I, I just say, okay, this is my background, this is where I come from. You, you know, say proudly, I'm Romanian. Yeah, I'm Romanian, so you know, I, I know people that because of this sort of, sort of negative approach to Romanians lately, they don't want us to say that. The negative attitudes have been fueled by images such as these. Romanian rumor around Marble Arch this summer. Police moved them on many times. Some have even been flown home but returned. Then there was this, a camp at Hendon Football Club. It was evicted by police in the summer. As a result, crime in the area dropped. Still, of all arrests for begging in London last year, Romanians accounted for 49%. For pickpocketing, it was 34%. Figures like that have helped shape our opinions. A recent poll suggested 82% of people thought restrictions on the numbers of Romanians and Bulgarians allowed to settle in the UK should continue next year. It's all helped boost the popularity of the UK Independence Party. Let's be frank here. Uh, crime will come if these people come in numbers, and I think that's something that the British people and British society as a whole just don't need. Is that something you do think that's specific to Romanians? Um, I'm not sure it's specific to Romanians, but I think there is a definite link between, uh, be between Romania and crime, and that's born out of these uh, statistics. I don't like to draw the distinction of anything as, as such as Romanian crime. Crime is crime and we will enforce against all of it. What drives crime is not just poverty, it's disparity. And Romania is clearly a poor country in comparison to the United Kingdom. And the temptations are, uh, available to all migrants from poorer backgrounds from anywhere in the world are greater when they come to what is perceived to be a richer country. Transylvania in northern Romania. This is a country I know well, both professionally and personally. It's where I first met my wife, now a barrister in the UK, and I've been coming here for two decades. There are some prosperous towns up here, but there's also poverty, and no group is poorer than the Roma. There are different ethnicity from Romanians, they came from India 700 years ago and settled across many East European countries. I'm joining British police here as part of a wider intelligence and information sharing process. This is the village of Apatza. It might look like any other traditional, tranquil community in the Carpathian Mountains, but it's not. Apatza has a secret and the British police have come all this way to try and unlock it. Chief Superintendent Adrian Usher's patch in London has a high number of Romanians, many of them Roma. And it's the Roma many Romanians blame for their poor image abroad. Remember the Hendon Stadium. Out of the 68 people evicted, 65 came from a Patsa. Is this your home? He wants to find out why. How many people live here? Chop. Seven. Seven? Is there, is there any, is there any water or...? Uh, a bit tapa. No. No, well, my no. Yeah, And what do you use for toilet and for washing? Yeah, I got one. Toilet in the field. Okay. The Roma have been persecuted through the centuries. This mission is a delicate one. Once he's discovered why so many from here came to the UK, He'll advise them they shouldn't return unless they can support themselves. 
What I'm saying is that we know that if you come to the UK without a name job to go to, then you're at a really increased risk of being exploited or being the victim or perpetrator of crime. You're stepping into a really controversial arena here, aren't you? I mean, the whole issue of immigration and what's going to happen to Romania in particular in the new year. Well, I'm, I'm not here to comment on any political issues at all. We're here to protect all the residents of London, and that includes those people who come to London looking for work. Next is the home of a man who used to live in the Hendon Stadium camp. He knows the secret of why so many from Apatza headed to the same place. I was not And who was the first person to leave here? Was it you? Well, no. <laughs> My cousin. Well. Your cousin was the first, yeah? And he went and then he phoned you. She must want to me, Yeah? Do you know how many people? from here went to London, do you know? Yeah, maybe 400. Maybe 400. People like Alexandru travel to the UK for work on the strength of one phone call. They're prepared to endure a grim camp in London so they can provide enough money for a family home like this. Thank you very much for letting me see your home. And you. He plans to live in the chief superintendent's own patch back in London. Very good to click out. If you want to get an idea of the depth of the connection between here and the UK, one of these little girls just ran over and said, "Very good in Cricklewood." A Cricklewood, yeah. Ah, Cricklewood, yeah. Yeah. You know Cricklewood. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> and it's Cricklewood where hundreds of Romanians, many of them Roma, are part of a growing underclass. This is what residents wake up to each morning. Gangs of Romanians waiting for work on the black market. Among them is Alex, who looks for cash in hand labouring jobs. He speaks no English and has no qualifications. Even so, he plans to try and enter the formal job market in January. Back home, he has a partner and three children, deciding whether to come too. I'm a gypsy and I'm proud of it. I don't think that it is an insult because I don't steal and I don't commit crimes. I would bring my family here and I don't think it would be too difficult to look after them. I would rent two rooms and a kitchen if everything was convenient. So how many others have come since Romania and Bulgaria joined the EU in 2007? Official figures say there are currently just over 100,000 Romanians and 57,000 Bulgarians, but those are just estimates. The truth is, we simply don't know. We don't count them in and we don't count them out. No, we don't. And when um, I spoke to you this time last year, we, we raised the same point ten months ago, and you said that's going to change soon. Uh, yes, and we're putting in place exit controls. How many Romanians and Bulgarians does the government think are going to come here next year? If you look at the organisations that have made estimates, they vary hugely. So some have made estimates at the low end, some have made very large estimates. Frankly, the range of those estimates, I think, demonstrates that it isn't really a very sensible thing to do. Politicians have got their guesstimates badly wrong before. In 2004, ten new countries joined Europe. The Poles, with their close ties to the UK, were expected to come, but the Labour government underestimated the number by at least five times. That's given UKIP a stick with which to beat the other parties this time round. The number of people who have come has been completely underestimated. If you look at Migration Watch UK, they're saying it's going to be 50,000 a year. That's what they estimate over the next five years. Uh, what we know, or what we expect, is that large numbers of people will come. His figures are from a think tank concerned about uncontrolled immigration. In 2004, it was about countries joining the EU. This time, Romania and Bulgaria are already in. On January the 1st, it's just about ending all work restrictions. The newspapers are saying the gates are opening, there's going to be a flood of Romanians. Is that something you recognise? 
Absolutely not, because Romania has joined the European Union seven years ago. So in the last seven years, those Romanians who wanted to go and work and live abroad, they already did so. And a very tiny minority of Romanians have chosen Britain as their work destination. Back in Romania, there's another side to the country, the middle classes with very different attitudes towards the UK. Whilst we're filming, my brother-in-law is offered a job in the UK. He and a group of friends were enjoying a drink in their favourite bar in Bucharest. The job is for a US computer giant based in London. I'm intrigued to find out if he'll take it. Most people would think you'd leap at the chance and say, great, a UK-based job. No, not really. Uh... So what did you say? There should be a lot of money involved to motivate me to make such a decision. So you said I'll only come for pots of money, did you? Not quite, but <laughs> that was the message. Yeah. And what about the others? You've been to the UK, haven't you? Yeah, I, I lived in the UK for two years. I used to work for a, for a British company. Then why did you leave? I thought two years were, were enough for me to get the British experience and then move on. Have you been to the UK? Do you want to go? Yes, on vacation. And as they point out, it's not just the UK lifting its work restrictions next year. There are eight other European countries doing the same. I don't really understand why they feel they are the only privileged people who will receive the flood of Romanians. But we did find some people interested in exploring the UK jobs market. At this careers fair for medical professionals, British recruiters are having to work hard to attract the cream. The Romanians are in huge demand in Germany. The, the Danish are here and they will recruit as many as they can. The Scandinavians are here. Um, the demand for them all over Europe is, is, is huge. When Romanians migrate, most look south towards the Mediterranean and Italy, where the language is closer to theirs. There are over a million Romanians already there. Spain is second with 800,000, even though it has similar work restrictions to the UK. Britain is way behind, with an estimate of just over 100,000. Some countries believe migrants bring economic advantages and they offer incentives to come. You have companies here that give courses to teach German and any doctor or nurse we find with a, a reasonable level of German will get a job in Germany very, very easily, probably easier than working in the UK. Even so, we find Aura Popper, a graduate pharmacist. She's just been offered a job in Dudley, near Birmingham. She fell in love with the UK after being a student there. For all migrants, mastering English opens up the international jobs market. Still, the decision for Aura is not a simple one. At home, she's got six-year-old Luca and ten-month-old Emma. They won't be able to come with her until she knows the job's permanent. After much thought, she decides to take it. I hope uh, my children will uh, love England as much as I do because I, I really like that country and uh, that is where I want to live for a long period of time. Her husband, Ciprian, will stay with the children in Romania for the moment. It will be a difficult period for me staying without them, but I hope a short period of time. As uh, soon as I get more confidence over there, uh, I can bring them. So I will work very hard to bring them quickly. <laughs> this is the family's last evening together. She leaves tomorrow, and they're not sure when they'll be reunited. Graduates like Aura are not the ones worrying most people, though. It's the unskilled and the uncounted who currently live beneath the radar, like the men in Cricklewood and Alex. Despite his good intentions about securing a proper job in the new year, 
You can see how he might become a burden to the UK taxpayer. There are already signs of just how vulnerable he can be. I worked for three days on someone's property. They drove me far away. I didn't even know where I was or how to come back. I waited for two or three days and I tried to call but when no one answered, I had no money left and I didn't have anyone to borrow money from. He never got paid. And what about next year? Could he really earn enough to support his family if his wife decides to come to London as well? We agree to deliver a video message when we meet up with her. Alex comes from a small, mainly Roma village, Augustine, just up the road from the last one we visited. It's another place where many of the men have already left to find work all over Europe. His partner, Magda, lives in this half-built house with their three small children. Very good to see you. Hello, Hello how are you? Hello. Hello, how are you? What will you do next year? Do you plan to join him in, in Britain? For a short period of time, four or five years maybe. Of course, I can't permanently live in a foreign country. But are there any incentives that would encourage her to come? Do you know anything about claiming benefits in the UK? Have you heard anything about that? No, no. Has your husband mentioned it at all? No, 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 no. Would you go to England just to get benefits? No, 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 no. no. What would be the point of leaving Romania just for social benefits? No. Others we spoke to said the same. We went inside to see the video Alex had sent to his family. What do you think when you see that? If they do come, this is the kind of place they might choose to settle. Migrants have been arriving in Slough for generations. 58% of people here are non-British nationals, and some are sick of it. This is a town where there's already been tension between some of the local population and East European migrants. And right now, they're worried about Romanians. The major problem for us is the actual resources like schooling, housing, uh, NHS. And that's not just, you know, related to Romanians. That is, you know, increase in population. It's a challenge for the council and the police. The police and council are working together uh, to sort of um, resolve the issue. Those kinds of worries are reflected across the country. A recent poll suggested that 85% of people thought immigration is placing too much pressure on public services. At the YMCA, community leaders are discussing the Romanian newcomers, mostly Roma. I've still got to say about the gathering around the side of my flat, but not long ago there was 50 there and they made <coughs> such a noise with their talking so loud. They were out there till about two o'clock in the morning. You go the next day and the place is covered with litter. But the YMCA has developed cohesion programs for the local community, including the Roma, educating the children and trying to win hearts and minds. One of the things I get annoyed at is the amount of negative press about them. As a community, they've been accepted now and the young children now believe that they are part of this community. But there are sloughs up and down the land. And particularly in lean economic times, some are worried the new migrants are a step too far, even those who are second-generation migrants themselves. It's not just by the Romanians, the Bulgarians are coming too. 
why haven't the government put a cap on this country uh, with immigration? Is it particularly <laughs> Romanians that worry? Uh, honestly speaking, yes, they do worry me um, more than others. Why? Um, I don't know, it's just something that I, I, you can't pinpoint why, exactly why it is, but they, they like to keep themselves separate away from you. They don't want to build that, uh, that bond. That Maybe Pakistanis we, we were done. like that when they first came and they didn't they were, speak the language. They were actually like that, but look at me today. And there were many others in Slough with similar views. Now the government's so worried about potential benefit abuse by EU migrants that landmark changes are being implemented. From next year, any new EU migrant will only be able to claim benefits for six months. After that, they'll have to prove they have a realistic chance of finding a job, or the money will stop. And English language skills will be assessed to make sure they're employable. But the timing of this suggests that it was against Romanians and Bulgarians in particular. No, no, it's not just about those two countries. Our changes are about making sure that anybody coming here from anywhere in the European Union, they're coming here to work and contribute and not expect to claim from our benefit system. We've been very clear, and I've, I've met with ambassadors from both of those countries, and I've been very clear, any of the rules that we're bringing in apply to all European Union uh, nationals. More than 70% of those Romanians who decided to come to Britain are of an age between 18 and 35. They are young, they are in good health, they do not ask for social benefits, they do not ask for health care. Those Romanians who came to Britain, they came to work, not for benefits. Other landmark measures include the clearance of camps like these. From January, European nationals found rough sleeping, begging, or engaging in antisocial behavior will be sent home and barred from re-entry for 12 months unless they can prove they have a valid reason to be in the UK. There's even talk of capping the number of EU migrants. Some are worried all these changes are an attack on freedom of movement within the EU. Others, like UKIP, say that means the best solution is to leave the EU altogether. Freedom of movement within Europe is one of those things that underpins the philosophy of Europe and the, the legal framework as well, and yet you're chipping away at that. Well, I think the, the point that we've made is that we're, we're perfectly happy with the principle, but we have to make sure it's not abused. It's recalibrated. Is the first, well, that's right. I mean, we're in the European Union. The Prime Minister said that we do need to make some changes to the relationship, and that's something that if we win the next election, a Conservative government will renegotiate and then put that to the British people. But the Prime Minister's made it clear he wants to stay in the European Union, but with a changed relationship. Since we filmed... Alex has returned to Romania. One of his children has a serious lung infection and is hospitalized. In the new year, he hopes to come back and work legally. He's still not sure his wife will join him. Aura has settled down so quickly at her pharmacy in Dudley, they've already promoted her. It means she can now bring her family to join her for Christmas. I wanted this for a long time and it's finally happening. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> so I, I really don't imagine them being here. I don't imagine my husband, my son, my daughter, you know, <laughs> to start speaking in English and not to Romanian. It's strange. It's like a dream come true. How many will come here in the new year is impossible to say. The politicians might be talking as if they can control all of this, but in reality their hands are tied. This isn't just a debate about Romania and Bulgaria, but about the future of our relationship with Europe and how we might be able to change it.